All right, so Sabra Menoka, so there's a huge tension uh, in the camp of the National Democratic Congress. Obekaya, last week, reports be bad, say, uh, John Dramani Mahama, Obe announcing a running mate uh, yeah, this particular week. But Menoka say, you know, information about no, ah, a D can buy an air trend on social media, say, Mahama has already settled on and again on Jinana uh, Poku Ajima. And Menoka say, you know, that information, Menoka say, see, and it has been debunked. Now, it is partly because of the tension uh, caused in the National Democratic Congress. Per reports, and the end, you to from the attorney, a patch say, Mahama di Onyayanka, number one on, a, on his list, a e Jinana Opoku Ajima, because he believes, say, eh, Jinana has a lot to offer. But then the National Democratic Congress, teach you any the youth wing of the party, they reject Jinana Opoku Ajima based on the facts, number one, the age, you know, because Jinana Opoku Ajima, she's almost hitting 70 years. Again, to the fact say, uh, Jinan no Pukwajima, as a young one were part in the moon terminal, and also come. I remember say, I debate near that she was a moderator, but apart from that, no, uh, one on yet any figurehead in the National Democratic Congress uh, or command the crown near there. And also, one thing uh, the National Democratic Congress they are trying to look at is the fact say, you will be a say, John Dramani Mahama, but a ne, no, we any term, the person can also uh, be a good fit to continue the good works and as it continue the legacy of John which means the panel a bit master ne as a running mate a wini but jinan opakwa jimano he she doesn't carry those kind of qualities but we'll come back to the the jinan opakwa jiman story later menuka say no new information abe peke abe kain san aye peke purchase a year martin amidu Martin Amidu or the same Biaba Betuja or Pacha say, She and the four morning numbers on per running mate in Nano. They came to him secretly, say, Anka on ye a running mate, Emma a year or more political leader. Now, or the same way a Tuja by answer and same booby makers, oh, mono no yanum for in some more can and yano creno. Let us put this on the screens because this is exactly what is going to con uh, confirm exactly what we are seeing. We are. Yeah, according to details of why Martin Amidu is bringing this particular uh, whole issue this time, uh, he said the NDC and they are facing a serious crisis in their camp because they can't settle on a running mate. If you look closely, or the whole screen, or say, I was persuaded to accept the NDC vice presidential candidate role in 2000, Martin Amidu reveals. So, why is Martin Amidu saying this? And why now? So fast track, no. Yenko niyenko ready, and yenko niyenko share in sema or the two. And according to Martin Amidu, detailing the sequence of events, no. In him say Martin Amidu the former special uh, prosecutor under the new uh, patriotic party, and he resigned after some allegations. Ah, uh, a bar upset on Timi and Chiu Biyan on also air purchase. Eh, yaku fado. Ah, on on the gang, no. Eh, normal limiting the richer. Eh, uh, omo making it seems that he is not obia obi timi aye ne juma. Now Martin Amidu was explaining say. Uh, some time ago, no, you persuaded me say, "Anka onje, and I accepted the nomination as NDC's vice presidential candidate way back in 2000 during the 2000 general election." And according to Martin Amidu, no, or explaining say, upon nomination as the running mate of the presidential candidate of NDC at that time, no, John Evans Atamos, eh, brother John Evans Atamos, omu ye no no, na ye pobi amana ye running mate. Into a part, say, a brand TB, eh, ah, a friend Alaji Mahama Edirusu. Uh, or no, and a bang now catch and say, Please, we want you to take this particular position. But Pacha say, uh, a bra or she more only key leaders of two dominant parties in Ghana. No, uh, a year, you know, who said no. I said, in his world, he made a relation while criticizing how choosing Ghanaian leaders, uh, based on these two dominant parties again. No, and now, a so a trust to say. In my case, on 3rd September 2000, Vice President Mills, who had present his running mate to the NDC, same afternoon told me that if his nomination of me was not acceptable of the Council of Elders and National Executive Council of the NDC, he would not run himself as a presidential candidate. This was before Prof. Mills had to visit Alaji Mahama Idris, the current chairman of the NDC Council, to persuade me to accept the nomination. Mr. Amidu explained. He added that the selection of running mates in the, in the manner done by NDC and MPP always bring about conflict and disagreement. So basically, no, our party say, na ye per se, on be your running mate, and ma a year, uh, ma a year, uh, Professor Atamos, our young baby, but you need to see ya 
emi so nwa kasa ene rejecti o pache se e du ten bi kwa na na e ye professor mills e pache se se ya 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 o presenti ni rani meet a e ye o no e Martin Amidu na party ni rejecti ya wan shwa o no kwa na obe jane yi na to bi enim di e si ya a de ene de ene even do Martin Amidu e pache se ye so men kwa fosa anke ye me pana chow ni ade ade ni yina no a de ene de ene yina e kwa ye no enti mi anko si Aga, I'm at the end of the day, what really happened was, what really happened was, he had to actually reject this particular thing. But this is coming at the back and a critical, crucial time. Uh, or no, John Dramani Mahama, no, he's finding it hard to actually settle on the running mate because of presenting Jena no Pokwa Jemana, yes, he and Pet, or some presenting the beam, yes, he and Pet, problem Kakawa, or cause service a problem about Jena no Pokwa Jemana, yes, he and Pet. So the question is who? Would it be an actor or what? Now no information but say my man settled on Jena no Pukwa and Chibia and on the youth wing of the party and the information ever say my man has not settled on any person a false news and they are still deliberating. Let us know what you think about this whole issue. Give you more updates as all of this unfold. Environmental racism. One after the other, people of Africville fell ill and the community was forcibly relocated to homes in another part of town because the government need, deemed that the area was a health hazard. Then the site where Freakville had once existed in disrepair as a slum underwent a revitalization that resulted in the construction of a bridge, port facilities, and new roads. The attention, time, and financial investment that was not given to Freakville was suddenly somehow available. Though it took nearly five decades, I understand that the city of Halifax issued an apology. I understand that it also began the process of reparation for the families and individuals who were affected by the forced removals and demolitions of one of the first communities of free black people in North America. I hope this inspires more cities throughout the diaspora to issue apologies and offer reparations for the wrongs done to the numerous black communities that have been stolen away, burned, drowned, leveled, or otherwise somehow destroyed. On the African continent, every time a young person packs a small sack and walks beyond the borders of his or her country and continues north, to brave the Sahara Desert to cross over into Europe. It's an example of a voluntary migration. And those types of departures are usually born out of desperation, poverty, hunger, war, limited opportunities, and climate crises, such as floods, fires, and drought. Warsan Shire, a Kenyan-born Somali poet, who was raised in the UK and now lives in the US, wrote in her poem titled Home. And I read, no one spends days and nights in the stomach of a truck, feeding on newspapers, unless the miles traveled mean something more than journey. No one crawls under fences. No one wants to be beaten or pitied. While traveling here on the airplane, I was thinking of all these things, loss, the financial impact of loss, and how to calculate reparations in such a way that they not only acknowledge past suffering, but also take into account the current social inequities that exist as a direct result of slavery's legacies. For some reason, neither I nor the flight attendant and lowered the shade on the small window by my seat. I pressed my forehead to the window and stared through the clouds down into the ocean below. And I thought of the people who had fallen ill on those slave ships and had their dead or nearly dead bodies thrown overboard. I thought too of those who had escaped the clutches of their overseers and ran quickly barefoot to the top deck and then jumped overboard. 
Who were they? From what town or village had they been forcibly taken? Ghana, my country, has more slave forts, fortresses, and castles than any other country in the world. The once free African men and women and children would be led in shackles and chains from Salaga in the northern part of Ghana down to the Asen Manso ancestral slave river site where they were giving their final bath. Asen Manso, where the river was, was also the site of a market where people who had been captured were bought were brought to be sold and 